Hello all, this is Umesh, History Faculty at Manifest IAS and this is the Current Jots Initiative and as part of this Current Jots Initiative with respect to culture, we have started a series on World Heritage Sites. World Heritage Sites um, are very very important UNESCO designated sites in India uh, which there are a total of 38 sites and these sites have we have categorized into subcategories and as part of these subcategories today we are going to discuss the Dravidian architecture which is part of the World Heritage Sites World Heritage Sites and as part of this initiative we will have a look at the uh, the, the, uh, the two sites which are presented today are one is um, the group of monuments at Mahabalipuram and the second is the Cholan temple architecture. Both of these are part of UNESCO World Heritage Site in the Dravidian architecture and why they are included and other things we are going to have a look at. See Subscribe now and press the bell icon. Never miss an update. These are the 10 criteria which determine whether a given site is of outstanding human value or not, uh, outstanding human value or not. And these 10 criteria, we are going to have a look at how these two sites are applicable, how these 10 categories or 10 criteria are applicable to some of these 10 criteria are applicable to the two given sites which are going we are going to discuss today as part of this now first and foremost we are going to discuss uh, the group of monuments at Mahabalipuram and after that we are going to discuss the Cholan temples and before going into these features first we are going to discuss the basic features of a any given Dravidian temple style more or less most of the temples have a rectangular outlay and in this rectangular outlay, outlay is completely covered with prakara walls and at the center of this rectangular outlay we will have the central sanctum sanctorum which is known as the garbhagriha and on top of this garbhagriha you will have a pyramidal vimana pyramidal vimana on this pyramidal vimana you have a octagonal shikara an octagonal shikara then apart from this there is attached mandapas which are present in most of these temples which are present on raised platforms and there will be numerous pillars in these mandapas too numerous pillars in these mandapas too and they are mostly flat roofed then apart from that you have entrance gateways which are present on this prakara wall which are known as gopras no gopras these are very very important pyramidical structures which are present in this temple outlay then apart from that you have water tanks which are known as pushkarinis there are various different kinds of mandapas which are part of this temple architecture and as part of these mandapas you have mandapas like maha mandapa artha mandapa uh, kalyana mandapa okay and many other kinds of mandapas are there then apart from these there will be many subsidiary shrines which are present to uh, present to host various deities in a given temple complex and these subsidiary shrines usually there is a aman shrine also then apart from aman shrine you have also find shrines for the the sons of the god let's suppose shiva temple is there then subsidiary shrines will be of ganesha and kumara respectively this format the entire temple structure is present i think more or less we have discussed under every temple it has dwarapalas who are present in the central sanctum sanctorum then apart from that ornate pillars will be present subsidiary shrines we have discussed gopra will be present prakara wall is present temple chariot some of these temples are built in the format of a chariot if not for the entire temple some of the mandapas are built in the format of a chariot okay today we are going to discuss what are these features okay where they are applicable and stuff so this is the temple outlay subsidiary shrines are present Mandapam is present, uh, Garbhagriha is present, Vimana is present, then apart from that water tank is present and Prakara wall is also present. Now we are going to have a discussion about the group of walls at Mahabalipuram in Tamil Nadu region. So this is very important site this year particularly because of the Xi Jinping and Modi summit which occurred in Mahabalipuram so definitely there is going to be a question on this uh, Mahabalipuram and when it comes to Mahabalipuram as a city we will have a dis brief discussion about the history of the city this city has been constructed by the Pallavas between 6th and 9th centuries and it has been established by a person by the name of Narsimha Varman I or his title is Mahamalla Mahamalla after defeating Pulakis in 2 the ruler of Chalukyas in a Balla Yuddha or in a combat Okay, armless combat, he kills Pulakesi II of Chalukya dynasty. After that, he gets the title of Mahamalla, and on this title of his, he constructs a temple which is known as Mahamallapuram. And later day, it is also called as Mahabalipuram. It is a coastal town and it has been established by this person, Narsimha Varman I. And as part of this temple, this temple, this city is very very prominent because it shows the evolution of Dravidian architecture from its most preliminary stage to the most advanced stage as part of this evolution process the evolution process can be categorized into strictly three 
different categories of temples the first one is known as mandapa which is known as the cave temple the second format is known as a ratha format which is represents a free stand which represents stone carved temples and the third format is known as free standing temples and the free standing temples are structural temples which are built with uh, rock bricks okay they are not carved temples they are rock bricks constructed temples so three different kinds cave mandapa then a second one is uh, you know, the ratha format of temples and the third one is the free standing temple now we will have a look at what are these temples where are they present see the first and foremost is cave mandapa rock cut ratha then free standing temple when it comes to the cave temple the cave temple has the typical architecture which we discussed earlier here also the caves typically have a pillared portico which is present flat roofed they are they are contained dwara palas then ornate pillars are present inside the temple uh, sanctum sanctorum is present in a rectangular format which hosts the central deity and the dwarapalas are present here as shown here then apart from that there will be pillared porticos this is known as a mandapa format and these mandapas are present in mahabalipuram itself so this is the first and foremost format then the second important one which is part of this temple architecture is known as the ratha format the ratha format wherein uh, huge rock boulders are carved into sim single temples okay this is the example for the ratha format of temples i will tell the features of this ratha format of temple and here in uh, uh, in mahabalipuram we find the pancha pandava rathas the pancha pandava rathas which are present and they typically have the dravidian formative stage of dravidian architecture they are a transition from the cave temples to the free standing temples cave temples to the free standing temples and here you have the pancha pandava rathas the pancha pandava rathas they typically have pyramidal profile okay see you have pyramidal profile you have a vimana kind of a structure then on the top of it you find also find the shikara the shikara is also present then apart from the uh, the shikara we have the pillared portico is also present then this is the typical outlay of the temple structure it is constructed on a raised platform too so when it comes to the ratha format okay i have shown you the images now we are going to uh, have a look at the standard features the standard features one is the barrel vaulted roof or shala the barrel vaulted roof or shala is also present pyramidal profile is present octagonal shikara i have shown they are multi storied not single storied then apart from that you have a square massive pillars present ornate bases and full capitals engravings on exteriors which dwarapalas show temple so these are the typical features of the ratha format of temples okay ratha format of temples and i have shown you okay this is the typical style and these are known as the pancha pandava rathas and here this uh, one structure is this uh, pyramidal profile structure the other structure is the shala format which is a hut mat format and here you see the barrel vaulted structure in cave architecture too we discussed about it and along with that we find numerous uh, free standing images here you can see the image of an elephant and a lion the elephant and a lion the free standing images are also part of this temple architectural style okay then apart from this you have the last style which is known as the free standing temple type and this is present at a show temple and kailasnath temple the show temple is present at mahabalipuram and kailasnath temple is present at kanchi kanchi we are not going to discuss today we are going to have a discussion on the show temple the show temple has multiple vimanas there are in fact two vimanas which are present with the temple gopurams entrance gateways are present independent sculpture is also present i'll show you image of the temple for you okay this is uh, the temple structure there are multiple vimanas this is one this is the second image then apart from that numerous free standing temple structures okay if you have a look at these are the images of a cows okay free standing cows then along with the cows there are lions and elephants are also depicted and apart from this there is a temple complex the gopra is also present okay gopra is not visible in this image then apart from that mandapas are also present all the typical dravidian architectural styles they are very well developed in this shore temple in this shore temple these are free standing temples then apart from this then apart from this uh, in uh, in case of mahabalipuram you have one more important sculpture which is known as the descent of ganga sculpture the descent of ganga sculpture or arjuna spiran sculpture okay the exact meaning of this sculpture which has been cut on a huge rock boulder it is not it exactly known either it can be the image of descent of ganges or it can be the image of arjuna's penance here at this juncture you can see a person who is conducting a penance a ascetic okay it can be seen as either it can be bhagiratha or who brought the ganga by his tapas or it can be the image of arjuna who is praying for his arms 
to Lord Shiva. It can be depicted as one of the two. Then apart from that, numerous other devas are present. Human life is depicted. Animal life is also depicted. And mystical animals okay, are also depicted. Here you can see the Naga image. So all of these things are part of this panorama of a sculpture which is known as Descent of Ganga. And there has been a UPSC question on the location of Descent of Ganga to earlier ones. So that is why it is very very important. Now as part of Mahabalipuram architecture we have learned three things. One is the Mandapa. The second one is Ratha. The third one is the freestanding temple and the fourth one is the descent of Ganga image. All of these are part of the Mahabalipuram temple. All of these are part are part of the Mahabalipuram as a cultural style. So that is the reason why as we can see the evolution of an architectural style from its starting phase to its end phase in one particular spot that is Mahabalipuram. That is why it has been selected as a world heritage site. World heritage site if you visit the place also it is a brilliant place. It is a brilliant place and all of these things you can see there. All of these things you can see there and you can see the evolution of Dravidian architecture there. Then apart from this you have the Tholan temples which are also part of the world heritage site list and as part of this the group of temples which have been selected as world heritage sites are three temples. One is the Brihadishwara temple which is present in Tanjore. The second one is the Brihadishwara temple which is present in Ganga Kanda Cholapuram and the third one is the Airavaitashwara temple which is present at Dharasuram. So these three things are selected as world heritage site. So world heritage sites and these three uh, temple architectural styles we are going to discuss and apart from being centers for temple architectural style they are also very important for their sculpture their paintings and their bronze casting okay the Cholan bronze casts are the best in the entire world they represent the classical tradition because they are able to depict in their images very deeper human emotions very deeper human emotions and spiritual uh, ideas they were able to depict through their images that is why they are very very important now we are going to have a look at the first and foremost temple which is part of this UNESCO World Heritage site list and all the features are more or less similar to the earlier temples that we have talked about in Pallava. So same thing. Okay, the Gopuram is present. See, I will show it through images. This is the Gopuram. This is also a Gopuram because it has a flat roof, barrel vaulted roof on top. Then this is a Mandapa. Then apart from that, okay, I will show you. This has the tallest Vimana in entire India right now. Surviving Vimana. So this is the tallest surviving Vimana. Then here you can see the the what is this is called this is known as a shikara this is the pyramidical profile of the temple then it is constructed on a raised platform here the attached mandapas can also be seen so in this format the temple construction style is present and when it comes to this uh, temple this temple uh, brihadi Shwaralaya, which is present at uh, tanjore at tanjore the most typical features are here even the nandi okay which is the vehicle of the central deity it also gets its own subsidiary shrine okay inside the subsidiary shrine there will be a huge monolith of nandi so that is how it has been planned huge monolithic nandi sculpture then the, the, the temple tank is present chariot format is present the prakara wall is present all of the things are very very much same the biradeshwara it has it's a temple Mm, Vimana is nearly 200 feet tall that is the most important aspect then apart from this this temple which is a little unknown is the beautiful ornate murals which are present in this temple structure this is very very important for us see when these comes when it comes to these murals they are present in the Rajarajeshwara temple which is present at Thanjore and they typically select from Shaivite themes they are made typically on the walls of the Mandapa and the central shrine the images which are typically represented are Nataraja and Tripurantaka image okay all of these images are present Dakshinamurti image is present Dakshinamurti is also a format of Shiva Shaivite temples Nataraja Tripurantaka and Dakshinamurti and this temple's uh, frescoes or murals they represent the best expression of bhava in entire indian art okay the emotion is very well depicted in these temples very well depicted in these temples if you visit the temple definitely you will have a look at all these things the prakara wall then apart from that the central uh, shrine the vimana which is known as shri vimana gopura is present subsidiary shrines are present mandapa is present temple tank is present all the features we can see at one place in tanjore in tanjore so this is very very important for us then apart from this here when it comes to this the, there are beautiful frescoes are also present this is the fresco format of Tripurantaka Shiva as the conqueror of three cities this is Tripurantaka format and here in this uh, image you find the image of Rajaraja along with his Rajguru along with his Rajguru okay this is one of the images which is present in uh, present in the Brihadishwaralaya the Brihadishwaralaya and apart from this all the 63 Niner saints who are part of the Bhakti movement their images are depicted on the temple 
temple walls which shows that this temple worked as an integrative force because some of these 63 nayanars they belonged to various caste groups in tamil nadu some of them were untouchables too so by depicting their images on the temple walls this temple functioned as an integrative force at the point of time and apart from this the entire city of tanjore is surrounded around this temple because in south india the temples around these temple complexes there will be temple streets these temple streets are main areas of market in this region so the entire temple it is very well integrated with the city too and it shows the interaction between a cultural site and the human settlement which is present surrounding it so that is the reason why it is a very very important one then apart from this Uh, when it comes to the mandapas which are present see we have a maha mandapa which is present along with that ardha mandapa dwarapalas are present and the more, uh, one more important interesting feature is the bridishwarayalaya temple it contained land grants in sri lanka too which shows that it formed part of an integrative force in the entire empire okay entire empire then uh, here some of the mandapas are constructed in ratha format or uh, uh, or cart like format then gopuram as tall as vimanas are also present in some of the cholan temples but not at birhadishwaralaya then the second temple is known as gangai kondachalapuram temple and here this it is exact replica of the temple which has been built at tanjore and this temple it has been built by rajendra one who is the son of rajaraja chola one see this rajendra one after defeating the pala kings of bengal he brought the water from ganga river from north to south that is the reason why this city is known as gang ganga konda cholapuram konda means the person who defeated ganga okay konda means ganga konda ganga konda is who ganga konda is rajendra one in his name the city has been built and this temple is an exact replica of the temple which is present in tanjore and as a notion of respect to his father he constructed the shikara of this temple to be 6 feet shorter than the original temple which is present at tanjore so it is 6 feet shorter so it is not the tallest vimana but it is more ornate and it is more intricately carved than the tanjore temple so this temple is present in gangai konda cholapuram which is a adjacent city to tanjore which is an adjacent city to tanjore and the last and uh, most last temple as part of this cholan group of temples is the airavateshwara temple which is present at dharasuram and this temple it is constructed by a person by the name of rajendra 2 who is a descendant of rajendra 1 and this temple it is not as big in in scale when compared to the earlier cholan temples okay because it is constructed during the declining phase of cholas this is a smaller temple and the entire temple complex it is built as part of a cart like format the entire temple complex is built in cart like format or chariot format then apart from that there will be a nandi mandapa and there is a stamba okay stamba is part of all dravidian architectural style the dwaja stamba or vijaya stamba is also part of this thing and one more interesting feature of this temple is there is a singing steps which Uh, are used to access the main sanctum sanctorum the main sanctum sanctorum it is constructed on a riser platform and as an access way there are this uh, uh, this step format and these steps when you climb on them they provide musical notes Mu- musical notes there are nearly seven steps which give different uh, sounds when they are climbed upon so this singing steps is one important format then apart from that the entire temple complex is built in chariot format and this the same temple chariot format of temple is constructed in konar 2 in konar 2 so that is how the temple outlay is so no today we have discussed the basic features of dravidian architecture on one side the group of monuments on mahabalipuram on the other and the third one is the group of temples which have been cholan temples which have been recognized by the unesco world heritage site unesco world heritage site the three temples we discussed about their format is typical to the dravidian temple architectural format okay but some special features are present which we have talked about so this finishes the discussion on uh, the cholan temple architectural style along with the a group of monuments at mahabalipuram this finishes the dravidian architectural style that's it thank you okay